Cable-less bills. What's more special than that? And for the past two years, manufacturers have been perfecting their, uh, well, cable-less methods more and more and more. And MSI is going at it again with its Project Zero uh, uh, refresh and decided to get its all-time bestseller, the Tomahawk, and give it a Brazilian wax. Now, starting with the obvious, our Mag X 870E Tomahawk Max PZ comes with a solid 8 PCB layer foundation, which is more than enough to safely insulate PCIe 5.0 signals and proposes a robust and long-lasting motherboard. No worries there. Design-wise, well, <laughs> it's a cable-free board. So the visible part of the motherboard is plug-free and instead have been placed on the Verso side of our PCB, which will add considerable comfort to your assembling experience since all the plug-in and branching is now refocused to the much more accessible back of your build. And that gave the opportunity to MSI to entirely, and I mean entirely, dress the motherboard with some thick aluminum blocks, the whole featuring a beautiful sandbrushed finish. It's simple, minimalist, and imposes an homogeneous feel to the product. A special mention for MSI dedication to the Toma PZ white theme. Even the PCIe exports and RAM sockets have been produced in white. Attention to details, which point out a, a long lasting sexless life. Now, do note that you will need a cable free uh, compatible chassis to accommodate the back plugs, which in our case is a matching Mac Pano 110 RPZ from MSI as well. What a coincidence! A gorgeous compact yet roomy chassis pre-installed with low dB maximum airflow easy 120 ARGB fans. RGB wise, the MSI decided to keep the whole thing to our RGB fan connectors. Choice that I applaud, I am not such a big fan of tacky cheap embedded RGB lights. It looks much better on the chassis and on the fans. Finally, I think it is worth mentioning that I also coupled our motherboard with MSI's very first cable-less all-in-one water cooler, the MPG Core Liquid P13360 White. <sighs> what a name, which adds to that cable purged aesthetic. It's a first to me and it works beautifully. More technically, our Tomahawk X870E Max PZ Wi-Fi or Max Wi-Fi PZ is powered by, you've guessed it, AMD's favorite couple, the AM5 CPU socket and its flagship chipset, the X870E. Our AM5 CPU socket will support an ever-growing family of Ryzen CPUs, now spanning on an unusual five years of rain. And from what I've just seen uh, at CS, it's here to stay for another couple at least. So, a solid value if anything. The chipset on its end is here to manage the 24 uber fast PCIe 5.0 lanes the Ryzen CPU provides and adds to it a generous amount of legacy PCIe lanes as well as our USB 4s and Wi-Fi 7 which is now 2026 must have features. And because they are close to each other, I did monitor their heat signature and happy to report that they are cold as they smelled good. Because yeah, I love sniffing motherboards, but you already knew that about me. VRM wise, we have 16 80 amps power stages organized in an eight parallel phases plus one with a generous 1100 amp CPU centric juice. The very same power solution we had seen uh, on the excellent Mag uh, Tomahawk X870 E Wi-Fi, which I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. On one hand, your processor will be dealing with snappy large capacity power stages, and on the other hand, well, parallel phases entice a bit more latency in terms of response, so still great uh, for long and extreme gaming sessions, but for tasks imposing numerous and severe clock fluctuations, you might find a better buy in a more expensive direct phases board, such as uh, uh, the carbon motherboards. Cooling-wise, well, the VRM comes equipped with tall, dense, beautiful cooling blocks, both equipped with double contact designs, which is important to keep power stages and chokes under constant heat removal. And in addition, we also have an expensive and large extended roof uh, for a fast heat radiating or radiating away. Um, 
English. A language of precision indeed. Obviously, I did run the mandatory thermal test and staying very close to its Tomahawk X870 E sibling, it gave me stellar results with a heat saturation emerging at minute 18, pointing at a very dense and pure aluminium alloy indeed. So pure in fact that I do need to uh, refresh that throat of mine. <laughs> Apple juice my ass. Overall, a wide spectrum power solution which will keep you busy uh, uh, through your sleepless night. Because, uh, you know, let's face it, if you're watching me, you don't have much going on anyway. Now, special mention to the all-in-one cooler, which did an amazing job at keeping our CPU below the 75 degrees Celsius during the entirety of the stress test and kept us informed of both CPU temp, CPU load, and many more metrics you can toy with through its software in uber high resolution, s'il vous plaît. So eight out of 10 is what I reckon for that excellent motherboard. Now, memory wise, if you have received a large inheritance of some kind, well, you might actually be able to populate some of the 256 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM this motherboard can support in the form of a dual channel configuration and going at a very fast, quick and snappy, rapid 8,400 million transfers per second, which I had no problem to obtain thanks to my top of the range Hynix MDI enabled Xtreme 5 Viper from Patriot. Now make sure to get the Expo versions uh, once. Uh, it helps you to get there without playing around uh, the RAM voltage. But in these days of RAM scarcity, it seems instrumental to remind you that 24 to, to 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM going at anywhere around 5000 megahertz or, or million transfers per second, whatever you want to call it, is more than enough for your system and any AAA games in existence now and for years to come. And anything beyond that, well, it'll be great for, you know, a, a memory-centric task such as video editing, 3D rendering, or just watching now, storage-wise, the Tomahawk X870e PZ can support up to four M.2 solid state drives, which is a nice even number. Two of those can receive up to four PCIe 5.0 lanes and therefore allow a data swap up to a peak of the industry, 128 gigabit per second each. But note that only the closest one to your CPU gets dedicated PCIe 5.0 lanes and therefore got the bulk of the cooling attention with a double thermal treatment on one hand and gets a nice and fat piece of aluminium to sit on its face like him to stay away from any kind of thermal throttling danger so this is where you want to put your boot drive obviously our two other m.2 solid state drive connectors are chipset fed and therefore receive four lanes at the slower pca 4.0 standard which is still plenty fast for whatever you want to do really but most importantly cooling wise there are no second class citizens here they all share a thermal padded large and thick heat shield to keep them cool as they can be my only critic nay remark is that we only have a single screwless latch on our cpu fed nvme and the rest is all screwed in and given the unusual amount of metal here i kind of understand because there's no way to insert a latch but yeah uh, in general i like to have a screwless build as much as possible so msi if you can find a way to marry the nice aluminium presence and some latches I'll be like, I'll be clapping all day because that's all I do and want to do is to clap you all day. PCIe export wise, well, exactly as we expected, we have our 16 PCIe 5.0 lanes on the metallically reinforced export slot for our uh, uh, heavy GPU. Nice little touch, we have a GPU eject mechanism which is here to stay because even Asus is reverting to this kind of mechanism on their new Nova lineup of motherboard as we will see in a few weeks. The two other exports are chipset fed and receive legacy PCIe lanes but keep an interested eye on our last one which can handle rather large bandwidths and could work great for some additional PCIe based storage. Overall a, a premium um, future proofed menu of exports nothing to re-say here. Now back IO wise we are exactly where we want to be. 
a rich set of USB plugs with two very fast USB 4s, reinforced with 30 gigabit worth of uh, front panel connectors for a 155 gigabit per second grand total worth of data swap. Not bad, not bad at all. Connectivity wise, we're happy with a NAS friendly 5 gigabit LAN as well as a low latency Wi-Fi 7. Audio wise, we have our premium ALC4080 from ULTEC cleansed by an adequate 300 microfarads worth of capacitors. Now, this audio solution is slightly above average and uh, yeah, exactly what I would expect out of a gaming motherboard. If you want anything more, how to say, professional with DACs and stuff like that, you're gonna need to get something external in our case. Now, I do need to mention that this front panel type C connector can fast charge your phone up to 27 watts if this PCIe plug is fed by your PSU, worth using in my opinion. Now, you know I cannot lie to you, and you know I'm the only one in life you can trust. But in truth, there is simply not enough PCIe lanes on this board to support this fantastic mosaic of components, because our Ryzen CPU provides 24 usable PCIe 5.0 lanes shared among storage PCIe exports and USB 4s. 16 PCIe 5.0 lanes are dedicated to our GPU export, 4 lanes to our main boot NVMe, and four shared between this NVMe and the USB 4s. Out of the box, they both share those four lanes and work at half advertised speed, meaning 64 gigabit per second for the NVMe and 20 gigabit per second for USB 4s. But you can go to the BIOS and disable one or the other to focus the full speed on the remaining component. And that is up to you. So a very flexible and agile motherboard in terms of bandwidth management. Now, cooling wise, Nothing out of the ordinary uh, in terms of connectors, but I do uh, need to underline the MSI only easy plug feature, which through a single plug provides everything your all-in-one water cooler needs to operate a cleaner build. Finally, troubleshooting wise. Well, I start by mentioning that the new MSI motherboards, including this one, come with 64 megabyte BIOS chips, giving us more space for a better build, more I want to say um, stable, richer, more featured BIOS, which is years ahead from the ones built years ago, which kind of makes sense in a way, doesn't it? And like all the Tomahawks uh, this year, it, it comes with an excellent array of tools to get you out of trouble if necessary, starting with our first aid easy debugger, our clear CMOS and flashback button, especially uh, appreciated to update BIOS without the need of a CPU, the very important OLED code debugger, which will refine your troubleshooting experience to the exact reason why your board refuses to boot and why your mother used to call you pickle warrior until puberty. Now, in conclusion, the MAG X870E Tomahawk Max PZ will cost you about 320 USD without taxes in the US and a bit more, 360 euros, including taxes in the EU. The problem here is... Focus. Focus, focus. Are you focusing on me? Right there, go. Um, the problem here is not so much uh, the pricing. I find it beautifully priced, especially in these days. The problem will be the availability because I found that they're mostly sold out and I understand why. Because on one hand, the power solution is a great gaming uh, centric CPU engine and on the other, it is still above average on more core computing functions such as video editing. And in terms of lifespan and solidity from the eight PCB layers to the cooling components, everything breezes robustness. Obviously, the mere aesthetic of it, the simple fact uh, to have near to none cables dancing everywhere around your build is simply magical. I am quite comfortable saying uh, that once you go cableless, it'll be very hard to go back. In short, MSI had followed a winning recipe, adding to its very well proven X870E Tomahawk this cableless twist which makes it absolutely irresistible in my opinion. So if you are a gamer out there and looking for something who will act as well as it looks uh, and at a midget uh, and at a mid-budget pricing, I'll get there, well, there is simply nowhere else your money needs, wants and begs you to be.